Hello? This will be my first mission um, to try and capture an asteroid. It will be an E-type asteroid, which is a huge fucking asteroid. It's going to be a serious challenge, um, and I'm looking forward to it. I'm using the same rocket design that I did um, on pretty much every other one of my um, rocket designs with the seven um, sets of rockets at the bottom that drop off in twos and then you've got the center one which uh, as soon as you're in orbit you can just turn the center rocket off and feed the fuel up towards the uh, outside nuclear engines to save fuel and then just drop the center tanks off until you're left with a tiny center tank connected to the large outside ones with nuclear engines obviously because of the new parts um, I didn't know if this would work but it did I'm quite happy because now I can upscale my designs massively get a lot more fuel into orbit with uh, a lot less effort there it is it's um, awesome it did take me about an hour and a half this is an eight minute video I have uh, cut out most of the uh, getting up into orbit part along with a lot of the uh, stuff like this where I'm adjusting myself to get into the correct plane it did take me quite a while but once I've got it like this it's just a matter of uh, waiting but yep, getting the E-type asteroid was actually a lot harder than I thought it would be. Um, I, I assumed that, you know, this rocket with eight nuclear engines would be able to capture it um, without any problem. And it did, it managed to capture it. But only because of that, it's practically putting itself in orbit. It's got such a ridiculously low periaps, you wouldn't believe it. 150,000 on the periaps. I, I, I was shocked when I saw it, so I thought I'm having that. I am bloody having that, so, and, and I did. <laughs> wow, that music sounds really weird when it's at times four or two. I forget. But yeah, here we come up towards the asteroid now. Obviously another jump cut, because you don't want to see me constantly cock up the approach. Which I did, many, many, many times. And as you can see, it's nearly out of fuel. But something I do actually discover when I send my next rocket up, um, which I've obviously already done, is any ships that you've got clawed onto an asteroid can share fuel. Which is amazing, because you get one rocket on there, like this one for instance, and then you can just latch another one on with a claw and drain this one's fuel. It's brilliant. I love it. And, you know, it, it makes for uh, refueling so much easier. Because now if you can grab an asteroid and bring it into orbit of a planet, rather than having to dock, all you've got to do is just latch onto a bloody great asteroid and then you can exchange fuel and, um, you know, use it as, essentially, as a refueling station. Yeah, sod docking. You can use a great asteroid to do it. Much easier. And there we go. Now we just got to bring this bad boy in. As you can tell by that curve, it's it's almost in orbit. As I say, when I saw it, an E-type asteroid with 153,000 on the periaps, I was like, wow. I've got to set up a mission. I should have uh, kept trying, to be honest, because this was my first design. It has flaws, for instance, I, um, I, I stuck all of the SAS stuff down the bottom, and where my, my rocket designs usually involve dropping the centre stuff off, so I'm just left with like a tiny centre bit to minimise weight. But in this, well, you know, I, I made the mistake of um, sticking down there so I can't drop the centre stuff off, and I also stuck the docking port there. My next design 
doesn't bother with docking ports. Actually, it does. The ones after that won't because you don't need to. But yeah, there we go. Just about 3-4 seconds of acceleration and it's in orbit. And now the incredibly difficult part of moving this bad boy around. And yes, it is very difficult. Honestly, moving this thing around is ridiculously hard. Takes some serious time acceleration and wobbling. And every time that you try it looks like your ship's just going to decimate itself. Bit of, uh, bit of acceleration. And I think I'd get it down to about 44, 46,000 million even. And then um, that's it. I did get lucky when I positioned myself originally. I didn't plan it, but I ended up practically on um, the reverse uh, vector. So I didn't have to readjust myself really. To, uh, to get it into orbit anyway. But here we go, a bit of exploring. This is me trying to get some science and bashing my head. It's one small headbutt for man, one giant headbutt for a fucking asteroid apparently. Yeah, I find out that you can't do any science, you can't walk on them. It's just like a big ship. You just kind of move around. I would have loved to have been able to do science if you are uh, around it. That would have been pretty cool. But now it's time to use one of my escape ships. Because, you know, I didn't stick in a, an aerial on this. So I stuck a couple of little... Um, here we go. Shuttles. Making use of the improved uh, ion engines. And they are really good. You know, the, the new ion engines are actually pretty good now. They use up, obviously, more fuel and everything, but that's fine. It just... It, it, it all happens faster. Before, if you wanted to go somewhere in this thing, you'd, you'd set it up and you'd better go for a coffee, go to get a shower, go for a walk, you know, your dog. Watch a couple of episodes of your favourite fandom, whatever the hell that might be. And then, you know, come back and you, you might have got 10% of the way there. But here we come. It's a good job I'm not reusing this thing. Damaging one of those solar panels. But yeah, thanks for watching guys. If you um, enjoyed this, please feel free to like, subscribe, comment, and uh, check in on the next video. Thanks for watching.